I'm now actually moving to EFSA to Marco Binaglia, who is a senior scientific officer in the unit on biological hazards and contaminants. And I welcome his presentation on the new chemical strategy and HBM as part of chemical policy making in the EU. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the presentation. Thank you for the kind invitation to this meeting. I will share my screen. I prepared just a few slides to go to the presentation. So, um, just to start, oops, I'm sorry. Okay. To start, I would like to start saying that uh, data from uh, sorry, data from human biomonitoring studies have an important role in the dietary, in dietary risk assessments, and we have examples in EPSA where data on biomarkers of exposure and data on biomarkers of effects were used to perform risk assessments. Um, I could cite, for instance, uh, um, assessment for heavy metals present in in food. Uh, or more recently, we used human biomonitoring data also to assess um, persistent con food contaminants uh, that, that enter into food trade environment. But also, uh, and we have examples where uh, use uh, assessment of substances present in food content materials like phthalates or BPA were uh, performed, uh, also considering uh, human biomonitoring data. Uh, therefore, of course, EFSA welcome the HBM for you uh, as, as a very important uh, project because it's for the first time that there is a coordinated effort uh, at European level to generate European one by monitoring data. What is the future of this uh, of this data? Um, for sure. Uh, human biomonitoring is going to gain weight in the risk assessment of chemicals uh, compared to what is now uh, for different reasons. And, and we, we think that it can, can help to, um, to reach the objectives of the new EU chemical strategy. Human biomonitoring can provide information on uh, the aggregate exposure from different sources and as such can help to assess risk for substances falling under different uh, uh, regulatory schemes uh, under the responsibility of different EU agencies. Uh, and this would serve, let's say, would help to achieve the one substance, one assessment objective that is one of the principle of the new, uh, of the new chemical strategy. Um, we, we have seen before also today that uh, human biomonitoring data can help to shed light on the possible contribution of chemical hazards to the onset of uh, human diseases. And as such, that can uh, help to put into context the, the data we have from experimental, uh, for laboratory animals and anyway, experimental toxicology. Um, they cannot do it in isolation, I think. And um, for this reason, it is very important to integrate human biomonitoring data, in particular uh, biomarkers of effect, with other uh, technologies and other methods that help to identify the key steps in the um, uh, uh, that that cause the, the, the toxicity of chemicals. Therefore, integrating biomonitoring data with, for instance, new assessment methodologies to identify uh, adverse outcome pathways and things like that. And in this sense, of course, the um, integration of the HBM for you into PARC, I think it's a move in the right direction because it will help and will facilitate this integration of data. Finally, we have also uh, seen during the presentation just before the coffee break that uh, the, the human biomonitoring data can help to uh, better focus the assessment of combined uh, exposure to multiple chemicals. They can help to identify the relevant mixtures which uh, we are exposed to, um, and also the relevant mixture composition we are exposed to. Finally, and sorry if I move a bit into my 
uh, risk assessor uh, point of view, but it is very important, I think, and this was, I think, already mentioned already by Jack before and uh, just before my presentation, it is very important that the data that are generated uh, in, this, in the human biomonitoring studies uh, to achieve these objectives must be generated and reported in the right way. Uh, and for, by, by this, I mean they should be generated uh, with the right methods, uh, the right relevant markers, let's say, and they should be generated and reported, having bearing in mind the need to inform risk assessors because the ultimate goal should be to really express uh, conclusions on risks from chemical exposure uh, of the human population in Europe. Um, and in this sense, I think it was just mentioned before, uh, of course, I'm well aware that for many uh, objectives, uh, aggregate data from human biomonitoring study is sufficient, are sufficient uh, for the scope. In some other cases, uh, the need to have access to individual data is very important. Um, one example is if um, the, the scope is to carry out those response uh, analysis on a biomarker or effect, the need, the, 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 the access to individual data can really make the difference. Um, in this sense, we know, and this was cited before by Jack, that um, access to individual data is very difficult at the moment. Uh, it's limited by the uh, personal data protection uh, rules in Europe, the legislation in Europe. There must be, uh, I think that, that there must be an effort uh, from from probably the policymakers, the, the the scientists, and also the, the agencies to um, overcome these difficulties to get access to individual data that agencies, uh, regulatory agencies, can really access the data in the way they can use them for the risk assessments. And. This was actually my last slide of very quick presentation.